Morgan from the Grey Gums Hotel in Penrith. Uh, what's my name? Daggy. Daggy, I'm here with you <laughs> to uh, talk rugby league. Round two is uh, done and dusted. Um, yeah, I haven't uh, had that many beers Say yet. my name. <laughs> yeah, say it, bitch. Uh, how are you, David? <laughs> good, pardon yourself. Yeah, good, good. good. Uh, yeah, good game, good round of footy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Pretty quiet weekend, family stuff at home. But, um, yeah, I got through every minute of every game, as we try to do every week. And um, mm-hmm. there's some very exciting games of football. Um, some, yeah, tense, tense, tough struggles in some of them. And then there was a few games that were probably a little bit ordinary, just through the amount of errors in these first two weeks has been astounding. Yeah. Considering just handling errors and ruck infringements and guys doing stupid stuff. But. And then compound that with uh, some referees happy to... Oh, my God. To the, well, what was the Cronulla game? There was five the penalties f- in the first six minutes or something. Fucking pee out of the whistle, yeah. So it, was, uh, it set the t- and it, unfortunately, it sets the tone for the whole game and doesn't get much better. And I dare say it's probably set the tone for the first four or five rounds, I would imagine. <laughs> the most baffling changes. thing about it all is that... Everybody to a person raved about how well the Vegas games are refereed. Mm-hmm. So they can do it when they want. Yeah, absolutely. And they just choose not to. Uh, unless it's Origin or Finals or... Or a game where both teams are up and going from the very start. If, yeah. if both teams come out of the box fl- uh, flying, you generally see the whistle go away a bit. But when, when it's that that tough feeling out period for the first 10 or 15 minutes, the refs seem to like to put a stamp on the game and mm. fuck around. The problem is a couple of them try and stamp and stamp and stamp and no stamp gets uh, <laughs> tends to stick. No recognition of the stamp. No. Uh, or evil shenanigans. <laughs> How good was that? <laughs> <laughs> no more shenanigans. Ugh. And then there was shenanigans 35 seconds later. There was very much more <laughs> shenanigans. Uh, what are we going to talk about here? Well, let's talk about the injury news, hey? Huh? Got anything else you didn't catch your eye apart from well, you mentioned just mentioned the trolls swear jar? Did you have an opinion <laughs> on that? <laughs> Today on the radio, apparently, he's uh, the the boys in his team were giving him a bit of stick. They're going to introduce a swear jar <laughs> for all the interviews going forward. So, mm. um, ah. It was more so the disrespect, like the swearing doesn't bother us. You listen to this podcast, you know, Fuck, <laughs> they're, they're not really going to be too worried <laughs> about an, an F bomb dropped here and there. But, um, it was more so the fact that he turned around and said, I know I'm doing the wrong thing here, but fuck you all. I'm going to fucking do it and mm. let's get down to it. <laughs> and then just continued to swear for three or four minutes. Um, There's a very good article, actually, I was reading it at Elijah's footy today, uh, the young fellow's footy. Andrew Webster wrote a good article about it, just saying that, you know, he's a role model and he does great stuff, but mm-hmm. why why go anywhere to present yourself in that light? Oh, exactly. And he's he probably... And knowing over, full well what he was doing too. Over the last 12 months, he's probably actually risen his, his stocks mm. over the last 12 months as as a role model and uh, the things he does in the community and he's held himself pretty well over the last 12 months I would say and then um, yeah I've scored my 100th try fuck you all and all the rest of that carry on um, yeah, it was more so for me it was just the disrespect of basically saying I know I'm going to do the wrong thing but here we go yes, I'm doing and, the and wrong thing and that's when you can see why people and if you've listened to this show for long enough you know how much we love Latrell yeah uh, as a player, and, and as you said, growing his stature at, at times off the field, and yeah, disappointing from that point of view. It, it, to no full, go full well, no full well what you're getting yourself into doing it. Yeah, prime time. I know most of the kids should be in bed at that time, but you know it's going to get repeated, and th- mm. there's going to be shorts of it on the news, and you know yeah. the, the kids well, know what essentially it, what's being said in it's him doing that. Out. He's ensuring that Triple M now don't interview him for the rest of the season. More than likely, or yeah. make a gimmick out of it and try and interview him. There's two ways that Triple M will go, but mm-hmm. they might insist on going and shoving a mic in his face every chance they get. But you can't have it both ways, and then expect uh, to have a platform when it suits you. Yeah, it's a little bit of poor form, um, especially when you see the likes of um, Cheese getting fined out of season on a podcast for mm. swearing uh, twelve months ago, whatever That's that true. was That's at the start of last year. Yeah. Um, the bloke. Was raked over the coals a little bit there for an interview he did outside of the NRL, and um, yeah, it's just um, probably a little bit disappointing that nothing's been said from the NRL by now, or even or just a fine, at of, least a fine in place. But, but the thing is, and maybe it's endemic to what's happening at South. So all the rumours about even why Burgess mm. left and stuff like that, whereas Smith was at the Roosters, and the Roosters said, "Well, it's not on," mm. and that sets your tone from. Front all the way to back. But it does also lead to the question of what's going on in the drill at the moment. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, he's, he's there's a reason for it that he's done it. He's come out and done it for, you know, knowingly come out and done it. So to me, it seems like there's a little bit of disharmony in Luttrell at the moment. So. I'm not sure 
the next couple of weeks will be very interesting for South. And they were particularly bad on, uh, which we'll get to very soon uh, on uh, Thursday night. So uh, I guess we can tie in briefly. Uh, ben, who actually hit us up through, or hit, asked us through, show us your tips page, but I asked my thoughts on uh, Benji apparently being a part time coach, which was again another <laughs> complete news limited load of shite. But uh, did you have any thoughts on those alleged? Well, this has, this um, actual interview was done near nine. To nine to twelve months ago, mm. it wasn't actually a relevant story of yeah. when he came out to say it. And more power to him. If you need to walk away from the game when you get home at night for three or four hours, or just shut off for the rest of that night and spend time with your wife and your kid, then you know you don't you don't have to be tied it, to any it, job in life twenty four twenty four hours of a day. Crap, and then. Yeah. Uh, and he did address it uh, as well, saying that, you know, yeah, from five to eight, he has dinner with his family. Well, more, as he said, more power to him, yeah. as do I, as do all of us. So, oh, mate, the only thing I think in life that you should be tied to 24-7 is your family, so exactly realistically. Right. <laughs> so uh, I don't didn't have an issue with it. And as he put up, went on record of saying since that uh, from five, he's there at 5.45 at Leichhardt every day. Or yeah, well, he came out quite angrily the next day, yeah. saying there's days I'm there so, at 3 a.m. in the morning going through footage. Like, yeah. fucking, what do you want? So, <laughs> what a load of complete <laughs> shit. And, and dead set the, the quality of some of the Daily Telegraph report. I saw Dean Rich in there, and he's now reduced to the lowest of low reporting, quoting social media comments. Oh, yeah, he good. did an article about Luai, and he quoted four Facebook comments. Like, fuck you. That is just <laughs> scumbag reporting. It's the lowest of low. Uh, and just one that you mentioned there, Luai, um, really thought he should have got a week suspension. He absolutely should have. If not, a couple of fines to go with well, it. Well, you know, I don't like <laughs> using double standards, but he got off touching a touch judge and... Last year, yes. And Hughes, you know, essentially pushed a bloke out of the way to make a tackle. Try and make a tackle, yeah. And he's been Copped given a, a week. He accepted the week as well. And so. in the, the game previous, um, the Cora... Very similar sort of shot around the head. It looks like he's going to get three weeks and a fine. Yeah. So <laughs> and then Luai gets nothing. Very, which is, and a trip. What did um, yeah, he stuck what the was the trip last the trip. year? Hudson Young got what, three or four weeks for a trip at some point. Yeah. Anyway, we'll just leave those out there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, same as you. The good news is I was able to actually sink my teeth in and watch every minute this week. It's been obviously an interrupt between cricket and whatever else has been happening. It's the first round I got stuck into and I thoroughly enjoyed it, I think. Most games, anyway. Unfortunately, had the Tigers had to play this week, but that's a different story. Um, but that was good. And uh, NRL uh, Elijah's discovered NRL cards this weekend too, so that's oh, um, very good. So that's been so funny. There's what got six, his, six bucks a week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he's got twenty like, bucks a week, twenty bucks for a folder and um, a handful of packs. So he's off and racing now. So he's stuck into that. He played well on the weekend too, so it's all been good. Lovely. Anyway, enjoy enjoying all of that. But injury news. The fish has been cleared of serious injury, but he's in doubt this week. Shoulder pain. Adam Reynolds will miss this week with um, his knee and Payne House in doubt for the grand final rematch this week. Tommy Talao is having scans on an ankle. No news that I've seen today with an update. Helam Luke is looking about six weeks so for his ankle, as is Stafford Toa syndesmosis. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tulangi, there's a, a list of HIA, Tulangi, Simonson, Fasumawali, uh, Fam- Famua Sili, Nikura, who's copying the ban anyway, so probably doesn't really matter. And um, I saw another one, Christian Welsh, I think. Yes, Christian Welsh. So, uh, Looks like he's be a week. Yeah. yeah. So um, a spate of them out of the round. I'm surprised Jeremy Marshall King didn't get a Category 1. Oh, <laughs> he was out. Oh, obviously, you and I both watch enough combat sport. <laughs> he was out. You look so at the footage, it's out. still out there today. You, you can find it on Facebook or you probably could even go to YouTube and find it there. But... The second after that ball hits him in the jaw, the way his head snaps around yeah. and the bloke was seeing 25 different versions yes. of whatever was in front of him because <laughs> his eyes were spinning around in his head. It looked like someone or one of us after, you know, 40, 40 schooners <laughs> at 2 o'clock in the morning. It was, yeah, I don't know how he got back on the field. But super coaches would have been happy because he ended up <laughs> r- 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 yeah, pushing out 80 points. Well, I was playing but... against a few people that had him. <coughs> Let's not talk about super coach, actually. Uh, Jerome Hughes, as we said, <coughs> accepted the week from the judiciary, and the core is looking at two to three. And uh, Francis Molo, two weeks, I believe, with an early play on his high shot, which wasn't great. No. Uh, there was, no, I think everything else was a fine, including uh, there's another sort of unlucky crusher. Was it Tupanua? Yes. And the man Tupanua, in the game? Yeah. Uh, Stefano, I think, copped a fine for his descent. Yeah, the rest are all fines. Reese Walsh, a few others, a few thousand dollars lighter. Um, 
Yeah, let's get into it then. The round kicked off. 28-18, Brisbane over South in a ma- – how this wasn't 58-18 is somewhat of a miracle because I thought Souths were absolutely woeful here. But uh, what did the stats say about it? And then you can have first crack at it. The errors killed both sides in this one, realistically. Mm. We had five tries to three. Three out of five conversions played three out of three. One out of one penalty attempts for the Broncos. Uh, Cook got sent to the sin bin when I really thought it probably should have been Walker that got sent, but somehow they decided it was Cook that was going. I think even, <laughs> yes, I think Damien Cook would agree with you on that one. 12 nil at half time, 69% completion played 65%, 230 plus running metres for the Broncos, five line breaks to four. 42 tackle bust played 21, 11 offloads to four. One force dropout from the Brisbane side, 298 tackles played 348. Uh, one intercept to three. 15 errors played 14. Four penalties conceded from both teams. Two ruck infringements to four. And inside the 10 against South Sydney. Cobbo with 93 super coach points. Walsh with 88. And Havili with 83. Yeah, so it was, um, what, 15 minutes of pretty frantic football, I thought, from both teams to start this one off. Um, really looking to get around the opposition rather than going through the middle, which is unusual for well, especially Brisbane. Physically, South almost dominated the first 10 minutes, but... Jeez, the Fords gassed out pretty quick after that. <laughs> Didn't they? What? Which you saw from um, Reese Walsh just carving back through the middle later in the match. But, um, yeah, both teams were getting around the outside. And South's long kicking was probably better to start the match as well, which got them in a, a decent position for that sort of first 10 minutes of the game, 15 minutes of the game. But then there was the kick out on, on the full from Cody Walker, and that really swung the advantage back to Brisbane. They went straight on the attack after that and um, set up camp down South's end and um, they started to get the middle, you know, sorted out and then really started to stretch them on the edges, which um, there was, you know, a big part of the game from then on in. Um, but South just couldn't get out of their own way for most of this game. No. Again, making errors coming out of, out of trouble, um, making errors in good ball and just turning it over the, the most op- inopportune time. What did, um, was it Vossi calling? What did he call it? The, the full house? They had every, they had the <laughs> downtown, they had the bloke in front of the kicker, they had the head dr- eye, two drop in the play of the balls, it was a ruck infringer, it was, it was head high. ten in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but the first half an hour was just just penalties and errors just completely killed both teams. Ruck infringement. Mentioned that I thought it should have been Walker that went to the bin <laughs> instead of um, instead of uh, Cookie there. But um, Walsh's first try was probably the big highlight of the game, or especially in the first half there, where he's cut back through and made the the forwards look real silly in the middle of the field, where they just did not get get a glove on him, and he yep. he travelled a good thirty metres across back through the middle of the field to score underneath the post. Um, Latrell probably should have put a nice shot on him there, but um, missed. I thought they probably should have been up by twenty four thirty points at half time. Should have been up by thirty. Um, I thought um I thought their best player in the first half was convincingly Adam Reynolds. I thought yeah. he was very clever getting just getting that momentum back. Twice he kicked him. He saw Johnson in the line. Kick turned him around with some smart kicks. One Nelly came off as a try. Uh, got the ball. He got the ball back on both. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, and then he uh, all but scored himself. Well, there was um, a try for Mariner, which was the first which one. Was off for, yeah, the that's right. That's right. In that's behind right. Johnson. And um, now, but I thought he's yeah. up until we got injured. He was absolutely outstanding in this game. I thought mm-hmm. he was brilliant. Um, and then when ha- and I thought the other difference in the first half was Carrigan just laying yes. that base back in the middle of the field. He was phenomenal in this in this match. Yeah. Um, when you're talking about first half, the problem with South is when they had. I'll just start, start from here before we get you know, about to get the second half. Um, this might have been the worst display of kicking from two for a combined two halves in first grade since we've done this show. <laughs> I thought the kicking was embarrassing. The first 10 minutes was okay, but yeah, yeah but the then, next half an hour. Out in the field, Ilias was twice out in a full. There was some midfield bombs that went nowhere. He's yeah. kicking into Talis Duncan, doing all sorts. Um, and I felt sorry for him because he wasn't getting a lot of help from his senior partner, I thought. Mm. Uh, and then when they finally got into attacking position right throughout the first half, they went left and they went right. And then they went left again, and, and they went right the again, <laughs> and they'll drop the ball or get bummed in touch. There was no, they had nothing in attack, nothing. Uh, and I, was, I, well, I don't think I, I was nearly going to message you half time and say their only hope is a crash play, and they scored, came out of half time and scored off two crash plays, and they actually had a and some size through the middle that just started getting back on 
even keel. But uh, I'll let you keep going. With yeah, that was the exact story of the next 10 minutes. South decided that they needed to play direct. Um, came out with a lot of enthousi enthusiasm and momentum in the, that first 10 minutes there. And um, they were just running the big blokes at at the halves. Yeah, One straight at, uh, at uh, Adam Reynolds and on his inside shoulder, they, they barged over there. And then they went to Ezra Mam on the other side and did the exact same thing. And it's 12 all after, you know, eight minutes into the second half. I think it was pretty much directly off the kickoff. Murray drops the ball and then it's back to normal transition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Brisbane just take up residency down South's end again for pretty much the rest of this match. They could not find a way to swing the momentum back whatsoever. And I think a bit of that goes back to their kicking game, as you said, and um, just complete um, unorganised, uh, no organisation out of their halves to set up any of their outside guys. It was basically just catch and pass and hope that somebody breaks the tackle. That's all it was. That's all it was. And they were, and Brisbane were quite happy to watch them go into the corner yeah. and just bundle them out mm -hmm. until they... And I think even those first two tries came as half a surprise. And then once they go, OK, well, let's firm our middle back up. Mm. And obviously Pass came back on and strapped his leg back together and got back out there. But um, yeah, once, they got, the middle, once but they got back together, they'd... They never look like getting back in this game. A lot of it came from um, Pia Cora on one side and their centres as well. They yes. were dynamic, Both running those. the ball, uh, yes. punching holes through the the centres and the and the halves, well, just causing all sorts of problems. Well, I spoke about Reynolds first half, but Cobo second half just <laughs> was amazing. And you throw Stags in there too. Yeah. Just about every second time they touch the ball, they'd get in behind the line and start, you know, they'd, they'd either make a clean break or drag players with them and pick up another ten metres and a quick play the ball. And it just led to Brisbane being completely dominant for the last 25 minutes of this game. Yeah. Um, <coughs> the, it just way too much pressure in that second half. I thought um, Totola looked decent, as did Kepi at different parts. Um, Duncan looked pretty good for his 29 minutes that he was out there, apart from obviously jumping in front of a kick off, <laughs> off Ilias. Um, Murray, Havili and Trell were the were the best players for South. Um, Latrell was only sort of intermittently in, involved, but Havili and um, and Murray really put a, a dent in the middle well, and, and did all the, the work. And this is the criticism of Latrell from, I guess, the general public is that he he had one touch and nearly set in set the first half try. Nearly had put I think Walker back on the inside through the hole, and it's the only time I can recall him touching a ball in the attacking within the opposition yeah, ten correct. in that first half. A lot of times mm. they'd go one side and you'd see him walking in the background on the other side of the field, yeah. which is interesting because you generally yeah. expect him to be sweeping around trying to get involved somewhere. But, um, yeah. yeah, it didn't happen. The the pace from Dean Barron, I think he saved two tries just off pace alone, mm -hmm. the way he was able to turn and get back and stop, knock a ball dead or make a tackle in a corner and start, you know shut down an attack from South. Um Fuck, he's quick, yes. <laughs> especially over 30 metres. He's well, he, very he, he fast. Pulled in, he made Johnson look slow. I was going to say, he pulled Johnson like, in second gear. Yeah. Very slow. Yeah. <laughs> um, Staggs was decent on that edge. I mentioned Pia Cora. I thought he was good. Kerrigan and Haas were massive in the middle of the field. Kerrigan outshading Haas in this one. Um, oh, easily. Just, yeah. Good. And I know consistently Haas 40 minutes. Consistently good. On the, um, on the bench, but yeah. You mentioned A. Ray, who was... Um, Reynolds was very good for the time until his leg started to <laughs> give him some troubles and sort of faded out of the game at the back end there. Um, and Cobo and Walsh were brilliant. They looked like a threat just every time they touched the ball. Reese Walsh, once he goes in that sweet play, you, you have, what, half a second to make a decision. And that is, and if he burns you, if he gets outside, you're done. If he, the closer if he, he gets to through. the defensive line, you yeah. see players start shifting and yeah, like, it's, it's jogging an on instant. the spot, not wanting to... Trying to pick which way he's going to no. go, and <laughs> um, I gave Walsh the three points just because I think that um, you know most of the attack, all well, the points in attack have revolved around him. Um, Cobo the two, and then I had Carrigan with one. I forgot Cobo. I had Walsh two for th I had Walsh for three as well. I had Carrigan two and Reynolds for one because I was just I thought he was fantastic, but I th yeah. Cobo, I think, was up around 200 metres, seven or eight line breaks. Uh, seven or eight tackle busts, a couple of line no, breaks. No, I know, I know, I know. No, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to argue with you. I'm just thinking. Mm. Give it to Cobo. He was, he was very good. So Carrigan two, Cobo one? Yep. Let's go with that. Look, we need to get a, have a quick final word on, well, first of all, just very, very quick because we don't need this every week, but we're now heading into a grand final rematch. Mm -hmm. Brisbane sort of back on track, but... I guess injuries couldn't have come at a worse time right now. No, exactly. 
But Souths, Souths were abysmal. We didn't even talk on how bad their outside edge defence was. And I know, as we said, Reese Walsh can do that. Yeah. Uh, Jack White, and we said last week, can't come quick enough this week. Cause, 100%. Um, they, they desperately need his, him to shore up one side of the field. But – and Elias has already been dropped. It's in the paper today. He's been dropped. So I wonder how quickly we barrel to – at some point the, the Microsoft has come back on Cody Walker. They do seem to get and, – and Walker and Mitchell do seem to get the inside rail there. That's mm-hmm. you know, allegedly is from all reports. I wonder how quickly that now comes if Dean Hawkins comes in, whether they work towards – at some point they just throw White into six, whether Latrell goes to six and – I don't, but they got rid of their other fullback option, didn't they? I don't know who they've got up their sleeve. But I, 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 and I know a little bit's injury based. How is South going to not finish bottom four? Their attacking structure is really strange because when they at their best is when Cody and Latrell, yes, they do go sideways, but they always straighten at the line. Yeah, and then they draw in defence, and then they make decisions after that whether they go themselves or they play the ball to their outside men or inside men. They're not doing it at the moment. They're just playing that lateral game where they go sideways, sideways, further sideways, and yep. then they either choose to pass it or they'll step and straighten. Yes. They're not drawing defenders. They're not going into the line. I, I don't know if they don't want to take the hits, you know, because a lot of that does come with a, a good whack after you yeah. after you get into the line and pass the ball. But it creates so many more opportunities, and they're just not being provided at the moment. And... Um, Weakness in their outside backs as well, let's be honest. Some of the yes. centres and wingers there are, are, aren't playing very well at the moment. Um, but they're not given great opportunity either. So um, a lot to fix for South, let alone yeah. uh, just effort-based as well through the middle of the field because they're, they're clocking off for 20 minutes in each half in the middle of the field and they're getting hurt for yes. all that. Which I never – it was our concern at the start of the year when everyone's tipping and finished top four. Neither of us did, I don't think. I think no, I definitely had him out of the eight, eight, actually, yeah, yeah, so so did I. But that was a concern, and it's sort of coming to fruition. And like you said, Totola has good moments. Miley had a good 15 minutes. But but when you see Kepi, Burgess and Havili all get beaten in the space of, what, five five metres? I think yeah. Walsh beat all three of them and went around yeah. them and then scores. Like that's just clocking off. That's not getting back in time. Yeah. Kepi wasn't back in the line. The other two didn't move laterally. They just moved up and stopped. And they all got beaten. So, and, and the tricky part, and obviously the heat now goes on Dimitri, but realistically, it's the same old story. Who's going to replace him? Mm. I don't know if it's a fitness issue or if it's just the, I if think there's it's just an effort issue. Seems like there's a bit of a there's a bit of discontent in that club for mine. I think there's much more than put it this way. If it was at the Bulldogs or the Tigers, there'd be stories about there'd it. There'd be already. stories every day, yeah. every day about how someone's not happy or someone else isn't happy or someone stabs someone in the back. Uh, we haven't seen it yet because they are a pretty tight shop, but we. Saw the Sam Burgess thing last year. We, it'll be very interesting this next few weeks, and then who's even out there? Should they not? Mm. Sh- should uh, they do drop the hammer on? Yeah, well, poor old Dimitri. You know, Cook and Murray are working their ass off every week, but there's a few guys in there that are taking 15 minutes off each half. Yeah, 25 to six. The Sharks Friday night kicked off against the Bulldogs, who I thought tried very hard. Uh, yeah, they did. They, they were in this did. game for a long time. Uh, we, this was the game that set the tone very early with, like I said, I think it was four or five penalties in the first eight minutes or so. Didn't get much better. <laughs> and uh, But what did the stats say, first of all? Four tries to one. 25 to six was the final score. Four tries to one. Four out of four conversions. Played one out of one for the Dogs and one out of one field goal <laughs> attempts for the Sharks. A sin bin against the Sharks. Six all at half time. 83% completion. Played 77%. 413-plus running metres and 196-plus post-contact metres for Cronulla. Seven line breaks to four. 48 tackle busts to 31. 13 offloads to six. A force dropout from both sides. 281 tackles made by Cronulla. 377 by the Dogs. Nine errors to 11. Five penalties conceded from both sides. One ruck infringement against the Dogs. One inside the 10 played two inside the 10s. Mulatalo with 116 supercoach points. Teague Wilton with 110 and Talakai with 82. Teague Wilton, that, he was phenomenal in this game, Teague Wilton. He was, um, obviously you watch the Sharks much closer to me, but that was as good a first grade performance as I can remember from him. Seen out of Teague, yeah, 100%. Um, I'll get to that because it's a bit of a breakdown on the way that they're setting up this year mm-hmm. compared to previous well, seasons. Go but, for your life. Um, 
if you thought the start, the start of the previous game <laughs> was hard to watch, the first 50 minutes of this game was an absolute shit show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, there was just penalties, uh, inconsistencies in the ruck, balls getting dropped left, right and centre. Um, yeah, just multiple penalties, ruck infringement, stop start, and they both played pretty poorly for you know that first 50 minutes, apart from one or two really nice touches. Um, there was plenty of physicality at the start of the game, which mm-hmm. was probably the most enjoyable thing, apart from... Nakora getting a little bit too excited and uh, just shouldering <laughs> Kikau in the face, <laughs> which <laughs> wasn't a good outcome for. Well, didn't seem to didn't seem to bother Kikau too much, but definitely wasn't a good outcome for Nik- Nikora. Um, yeah, the, it was really the biggest enjoyment in the start of the game. The Sharks sort of gained ascendancy around that fifty minute mark and started to use their outside backs a little more than what they had done um, with that left hand side again doing most of the damage with. Um, Teague Wilton, Talakai and Mulatalo out there really start, uh, being the creators of the majority of the points, or pretty much all of them, I think, in this in this game. Um, yeah, just as I was saying, the Sharks style this year, I think they've been, obviously, from the last two seasons, been put down as the pretty boys and the flat track bullies and the guys that don't want to get in and do the hard stuff. And to me, it looks more like they're really trying to lay that platform on the edges of the field. You would have noticed last week, Nakora got a lot more ball than he usually does, and so did Teague Wilton. And it looks like they're really trying to play inside those tram lines and, and really force a game with their forwards before they start hitting their outside backs. Because you haven't seen that sweet play realistically no. at all in these first two games. It's more flattening across the line and digging into the line with um, with Trindle and the Hines and trying to play short balls onto forwards or Talakai in the centres or Ramian in the centres and really try to play a bit more of sort of bully boy, boy tactics rather than spreading the ball and trying to put on 30 points like they were doing at different times last year. Mm-hmm. Um, if it becomes a repeatable, repeatable thing going through the season, that's probably only a good thing for the Sharks because they do know that they've got the talent in the outside backs. If they have to play that type of football, they, they, they can just let the ball zip across the field. But yeah. Um, and yeah, I thought it's a, it's a really consistent and effort. Mortala especially bought into just effort in this game. They yes. were they busted their asses to get the ball back in this game. And oh, Ramian's another guy I, I, that I does that. I think that's probably an extension of Nico trying to take less of a mm-hmm. like that that sweep play is a Nico play. Yep. Take that you know hand a bit of uh, responsibility off and make it a team rather Flatten than the, the attack a little yeah, bit than the Nico show. Yeah, and then, and it's really I think a concerted effort to get their forwards more involved and make sure that they are being controlling in the middle of the yeah. field, which I think you'll see for at least another probably three or four weeks yeah. before you do see the, them trying to play a bit more ball out the back. Um, and, yeah, it's just something that obviously that they want to set up in their game style going into finals, which probably is a benefit going in. Um, that's what's keeping these games tough and ugly early. and um, <clears throat> you know, but, but they're getting to the points when they need them. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, nowhere near as flashy as what they looked at different times last year and a little bit disappointing with some of the, the rubbish in and around the ruck, but they're, they're still going about it. They're getting the job done, so that's something to be said for them. Um, the dogs look like they were up for the fight in the middle of the field, but they are just so unorganised They're in and around their halves that there's no, again, another team that's getting no good, clean options for their outside backs. And uh, just no opportunities at all. Like Crichton pretty much had a couple of opportunities, but Raymond did, had a... In fantastic game against him in defence and shut him down just about I every thought, time I he touched Kikau the ball. I was fantastic. Yes, uh, Kikau was he, was. he was scary. Every, I mean, as a Sharks fan, you would have been worried yeah, yeah. every time he touched the ball. 100%. In that arm wrestle at the start, this was as good a performance as he's put in in a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, he was was very, very good. Um, and there was a couple others in the middle. Um, like the amount of work that Mann and Curran are getting through at the moment mm. is tremendous for, for some of the smaller forwards in the competition. You could feel it was about the <coughs> order of being, about the 50-minute mark. Uh, and I know they lost to Farmer but you could just feel the in the middle starting to give way mm-hmm. for the Bulldogs, and then that's when the points arrived. Not so, and the points didn't come directly through there, but that was no. where the, that they had that return. Uh, who was it? Kennedy made the 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 long return back, and yep. back through the middle to... A couple um, of changes couple of, angle of changes where Ramey angles. and yeah. went back through the and middle. And then they just yeah. hammered... Um, and then on top of that, Hazelton came on and played really, really well. And um, yeah. young uh, Tapua looked yes. a likely type as well. And he had 10 minutes, but he had five or six massive charges. I think he got close to 100. 53 metres of five <laughs> runs. There yeah, you go. there you go. It was 10 metres of a hit up and, and looked good doing it. Yeah. But it was hard to bring down. Um, 
decent speed too. Wasn't a big, slow, lumbering sort no, of fella. No. He, he got into the line at, at pace and got the decent play the ball speed in. But him, he so. came on and he had three. I think he had three crash plays in two sets or something. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely, they were looking for him. Um, yeah, no, hundred uh, percent. Where where do we get to here? Um, Burton and Reed probably tried really hard and was some of their better players. Um, Reed really needs to go back and run a few more times. Mm. I, I know that he might not get the opportunities, but surely there's more than th- I think he had three runs in this game. And but he's never. Be- I know he's come from. We've talked about it before being from Para, where it's not the Para way. But um, yeah, 18 meters all game. You, you need more Addy Hooker in a, in a team with no forwards. As you mentioned, or small um, forwards. Kickout was very good, ball in hand. Preston was very good as well. Did a lot of work again, just um, holding down that right edge. And I mentioned Man and Curran. They did tons of work in the middle. Um, their back five did plenty of work coming out of trouble, mm. but there was no impact from them. In, in the good ball, as I mentioned, um, no opportunities. They all tried very hard. Like they're not playing badly, that back five. I think they're all pulling their it's own weight. There's no opportunities. No. They're not getting Wilson's one-on-ones. And they're finish, not getting... you know, every time he's got a chance, he's finished this year. Caraz always works hard. And Connor Tracy... 20 runs for 160 metres as well. So. Yep. Um, back five again from the Sharks. Just do all that tough stuff out of the back end. You see, generally see tackles one and two is always either the wingers or the centres bringing it back. Um, and that racks up plenty of metres for those guys. I um, think Finnecane had one of his better games. He was pretty heavily involved in the middle of the field. Kafusi was decent. Um, you mentioned Hazleton and Tapua. Um, some big carries in the middle there. McGuinness and Braley were very good in the middle of the field, uh, just with that defence that they like to do. And um, Braley's, Braley's service has been probably a fraction better than what it was last year, which is um, yeah. hard to say. But um, he's, he generally doesn't miss the mark when he's when he's letting the ball go, whether it's off the ground or he's taking a few steps. Um, Wilton was awesome. And yes. yeah, Telekai and Hines did what they needed to do at, uh, when they were given their opportunities. So. Um, but yeah, it's Ronaldo finished everything that given an opportunity. So, I yeah, I went with three points to Teague. Yeah, I went two to Molotalo, one to yep. Talakai. I thought got through yeah, a fair or, bit of work or yeah, kick out or kick out. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I know but Nico probably had another six, but he did. Um, he God, did he's swinging. <laughs> he how did. How's he not going to be Dally M by four hundred points? I don't know. Hasn't had a line bro- hasn't had a um a try assist for the season and has gotten twelve points in two games. His defence was good. I will say his defence. His defence is good. fantastic. It's heaps better than what it was last year. Um he's still doing, you know, setting them up, getting them in the right spots. His kicking game's been pretty good, but that's ex- that's expected out of your half. That's, that's not, right. That's it's not, his job. That's not six points. That's right. It, question without notice, is he front runner for the New South Wales six? I wouldn't think so. Is Luke Moses, Brooks now front runner? Moses fit. Oh, yeah, Brooks is starting. To <laughs> Obviously, it's only two games, but if he continues the form he's been in for two games. All of a sudden, Luke Brooks is it, yeah. I think Moses would probably be a dollar eighty. I dare say they play market. Moses and clear yeah. at six, but and, and still plenty of water to go under that bridge. Well, it's Madge. I know it's a whole new world, but if they, if Nico hasn't by now, I don't know, like we said, it's a whole new world. We'll see. But I don't think it'd be Jerome Loy. I'd like to play him. It's, if the, if they really want to play all out attack and try to put points on, Nico is your guy to go to. Yes, but depends. and I've got, I would know. I've, but if record, they I would have, have no issue with Moses or Nico. They want to play two game controllers with um, long kicking games on both sides. Feeds, even though Nico does, but obviously um, Moses's kicking game is a little more pinpoint than what um, <laughs> than mm. what Nico's is. So it's actually <laughs> a very interesting question because if Brooks stays in the form he's in. It's going to be very interesting if we get picked. But that's a different story. Ridiculous. 26-18, Penrith, Parramatta. Uh, in an entertaining enough game, unfortunately, injury, I think I feel like injury probably took away from what could have been a really great game, uh, you know, moving a few power players out of position. But um, what did the stats say, Brian? Uh, we had five tries to three, three out of five conversions, played three out of three, 16-18 at half time. 75% completion played 82%. 447 plus running metres for Penrith. Nine line breaks to three. 35 tackle plus played 36. 14 offloads from both teams. One force dropout for the Penrith side. 337 tackles played 327. 13 errors to 10. Four penalties conceded to five. Uh, four ruck infringements to one. One inside the 10 against Penrith. Isaac Tungor with 145 supercoach points. Edwards with 116. And... Hopgood from 
the Parramatta side with 104. Very physical game, and mm. Penrith won the physicality, I would suggest. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on the back of Moses Lodota having an absolutely outstanding game. What were your immediate takeaways? Um, oh, sorry, I can keep talking if you... Yeah, keep going for a second. Uh, as I said, unfortunately, to my opening point, the I thought injury robbed us from a little bit more of a clash in that Simonson went off, they moved Carr right to the other side of the field in centre, and he was effectively a, a complete non-factor in this game, and that took away probably their most potent attacking weapon at the moment. And therefore, I don't think Parramatta quite felt right. Uh, Paulo, in, in the starting, they started Joff, uh, Joe from Galway, RCG. And I don't think they really got into physical. They really started matching until Paulo came on the field. And, um, came on the field? Yeah. And um, then got back, they were able to get back through it. But Penrith, real physical early. And for the story of the game was Parra just trying to get out of their own half, really. Mm. They just got yeah, hammered. Moses so. kicking was very good. But the physicality from Penrith was, you know, what you'd expect and laid the, the base for this. As I said, I think I'm forgiving of Parry in a lot of ways because I don't think their structure felt right at all once they had to swap and change those couple and of players. And was a non-factor after about half an hour again yeah, uh, yeah. with the, carrying that injury. Yeah. Um, Penrith would have been pretty filthy with that first try from Lussick diving out of dummy yeah. half. You don't see that very well, often I think up against th the Penrith three side. games Hooker scored the first try this week. Yeah. Usually um, my go-to and I was... <laughs> but, um, yeah, the Panthers really up the tempo after that first try. Um, even though they were sort of winning that physical battle, they really started to get shift the ball as well and start to test the edges of the Parramatta defence, which got them on the back foot and the metres came from that. It's just, it amazes me how far Yo and Cleary love to take that ball into the defensive line. Yeah. Like, they're basically getting hit as they let go of the ball pretty yeah. much every time they do it. And they do it one after another. So Yo goes in there, draws two blokes that both smack him. Cleary goes in, draws another two. So now four blokes have taken out with two defenders. And then if you get a bit of width on the pass as well, you've just got the happy days for the likes of Tungor out there and May and Taruva. And they just get silly at, at times. Well, the extension of that as well is when you double down on the fact you have a back row out there trying to cover this running uh, oh, the, yes. the sweep as well up for Parramatta. Yeah, but you got lines with um, Martin and Sorensen exactly. as well running exactly. lines inside so, and outside of those two guys. Exactly. It's just um, yeah, they, had a little eye floating around out the back. He did float. <laughs> he actually had some nice touches by the end of the game, but because um, his first hour he was he was cruising for a pot plant, but he actually. Sort and Edwards good. was absolutely sniping at times in this game mm. as well, back through the middle of the field. Um, some of the, the times he popped up and just made 15, 20 metres downfield, um, scored a nice try with the kick back through the middle. And he was in everything early in this game. And I thought he was a big part of why they were um, causing so many problems mm -hmm. for the Parramatta defence at the start of this match. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what else? We haven't spent a great deal of time talking about what was, at the end of the day, a pretty good match. The para were impressive from the time the limit time they got. They they found points in that first half every yeah. time they got down there, and even if that flick pass from from um, Moses hits Gutho late in the game, you know they're probably still in this game. But yep. um, for for the limited, I'm sort of saying that you can forgive a para's loss here. I guess is the point I'm making. Yeah, what kind but of I don't. I'm not doing justice to how well Penrith played. I think they they dominated field position, dominated. Um, the attack and probably should add another two or three tries at realistically as well. Well, they knew that they didn't really have to worry too much about Moses' running game, which um, you know can be a big factor at times um, and wasn't in this one. Dylan Brown floating across the line, um, you know, across the face of defenders and just picking up that short ball on both sides of the of the field. Once with Lane obviously cut back on a beautiful line to cut back in and score uh, a try for the Parramatta side, and then was on the right side was just hop good with the. Complete and utter crash play off of another lovely short ball off the hip. Um, he looked really good being, you know, obviously picking up his back rowers there. Uh, it's just just the opportunities again with getting on Penrith's hard team to break down defensively. Mm. But um, would have liked to have seen him maybe push a couple of flatter, faster balls out to their outside backs and give them a little bit more time to try and unlock the defence there. But... Um, it did seem the ball got out a little slowly at times to the, the edges of the Parramatta attack. Mm. Yeah, I, I, Dylan Brown hasn't started the, the season on fire either. But he's been good. He hasn't done too much wrong, but he doesn't feel like he has that explosivity yet at times last year. Yeah, he doesn't really seem to be up and running and no. stepping guys and causing yeah, problems with his footwork. He's, his short passing's been fantastic and some a couple of nice little kicks. But um, 
he's not doesn't seem to be taking the line on as much as um, he did at the back end of last year. No, that's right. Um, anything else you want to talk about? Um, no, not really. Quicker. It was just Penrith again where they get into that pressure footy and they just grind teams away towards... Once they knew they had the ascendancy, they just sort of... Without shutting the attack down, they were still going to the edges, but it just wasn't as often. And it was just that consistent bore through the middle and just bash the absolute tripe out of Parramatta who looked well and truly like they'd been in a battle <laughs> at the end of this game. Well, I guess we, we've got to actually pay some more... Tribute to Tango, who was just oh, phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Moses Leota try. Yeah. What a fucking move. <laughs> like he's 100, <laughs> fucking what, 15 kilos. Yeah. The way he steps on the outside of a bloke before he's even touched the ball. Yeah. And then just scoots around him like he's a 5'8 and runs, <laughs> scores underneath the post. It was a moment of beauty, that was. Yeah, it was. Um, Tango, six line breaks, as I said. Um, and like you said, the key to that is the ability to isolate him. It, it, he... Him and Tariva could have scored another two tries each, probably, if um, a bit more luck. And the, the other one I'll just mention is Gutho. The reason Paris stayed in this game off their own line, for the, the work he does at the back, mm. um, was Organizing incredible. the defence. Getting the defence right, but just Sweet being there. Play, yeah. um, a defence, oh, sorry, yeah, around. The one he missed was the yo crossfield kick. He didn't see coming. But the rest of it, he's, his defence is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. I thought he was, if he had to, to me, if he had to give someone a point other than Hopgood out of the Parrot team, it would be him. Um, but if you're not, I assume we're looking more towards three to Tango, two Leo to one to Yo. Or and how was it? that? Yo ends up with a ball on fifth tackle and just puts it on a dime yeah, for Taruva oh, around the corner. <laughs> how does it, that? Yeah, the funny thing about that is watching it live. The minute he got it, in my head, I just thought he's going to put it on a dime for like for some reason. It was just like he's going to do something here that yeah. can lead to points, and I wasn't wrong. Yeah, Sorensen made a difference coming back in. Lindsay Smith was good. Um, we mentioned pretty much everyone else. Martin, Leota, very good. Um, Hopgood was Paris best by a long way. Uh, Madison had a very good game. I thought he was very strong for the Parramatta forwards. So. Um, yeah, Tago, three points. I had Yo with two. I thought Fair enough, the work yeah. in the middle of the field he did again yep. um, and just all that grub, the work that no one else wants to do that he, he loves and just soaks it up mm -hmm. week in, week out. And, yeah, I had Hopgood... Um, but I think Edwards is pretty stiff to miss a point as well. So, yeah, yeah, they did win. Give it to Edwards. Yep. They did win. Saturday kicked off thirty-two twelve, the Raiders over the Tigers. They were comprehensively outplayed for the first twenty minutes at least, uh, and a lot of the rest of the game. But anyway, what did the stats say? <laughs> five tries to three, four out of five conversions played, two out of two. Two out of two penalty attempts for the Canberra side. One sin bin to the Tigers late in the game. 24-12 at half time. Nine completion, 90% completion played 81%. 351 plus running metres and 231 plus post contact metres for the Canberra side. Six line breaks to four. 36 tackle busts played 24. Eight offloads to 12. 301 tackles played 344. Nine errors apiece. Seven penalties conceded to 13. Three ruck infringements against the Tigers, one inside the 10 against the Canberra side. Hosking with 109 supercoach points. Appy with 82 and Samuela Fainu with 75. Go on. Pretty comprehensive victory to the Raiders. Um, looking a much stronger side for big parts of the match. few good signs for the Tigers with Appy combining with some of the young uh, players there who um, played quite well, I thought. Uh, likes of Galvin, Buller had a couple of nice touches. Um, throw in... Uh, Fainu in there as well. There's there's some positive signs there for the Tigers at least. But um, well, yeah, the fight back was good in the first half hour when they got back on nearly level terms. Um, I was I was ultra impressed by. And I don't want to spend this making about Tigers either because we should talk about Raiders more so. But I was ultra impressed by Galvin basically coming as eight year old and he was given the keys to the team. He was running. He was chief playmaker. He was calling the shots and he was good. I thought. Opportunity he got, he was good. His support play was good. He's strong. Didn't do much. Didn't do anything wrong in defence, really. Yeah, looked more like a running 13 than mm. um, a 7, but did a very good and, job. And that's been the, the rap on him. That's been the word on him coming through as well. That he's Lovely inside ball there for um, Buller to link up with Fainu for the try. You know what he's almost like? I just realised. Almost like a lankier Adam Dewey, in a way. Don't um, put that fucking shit on him. But but a better, <laughs> but a better, I think a better ball player in fairness to him. I don't want to make, but just from a build, 
point of view. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was good, yeah, he said Buller and Fanu. So those are the positives. I think we can leave it there as positives for the Tigers. Yeah, Pole, yeah. Uh, Pole was good off the bench, I thought. Did a good well. job, yeah. Um, your right-hand side defence stunk up the joint, let's yeah. be honest. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The left-hand side from the Raiders were having field days at different points in this game. Savage combining with Chris and uh, – sorry, Strange combining with Chris and Savage down that left-hand edge and just tore them apart. Um, obviously, it didn't help with uh, Toa going off. Mm. Um, but I don't know if he stops much of that either. I think he was involved in some of the stuff at the start. So. Yeah, no, he's never been <laughs> but, one for um, outstanding defence. Yeah, the, that right-hand side really got exposed at the start and at the end of the first half um, and probably at the back end of the game as well. Uh, for first 20 was all Canberra. Um, they had a slight edge in the middle without being over overly um, big through the middle of the field. Their forwards probably had a little bit of a day off compared to normally because yeah. they normally have to carry this side, but their outside backs were doing heaps of work. Likes of Hopawade and Tomoko down that right-hand edge were, were doing plenty of work. And then all the spoils came down the left-hand side with mm. Chris. Chris was strong again. Um, not a huge amount of involvement, but it was good when he did get involved. And Savage looked sharp, obviously, which is one thing. It's hard to get hold of a bloke once he <laughs> once he's already off and gone and he's got that kind of pace. Uh, it's hard to shut that stuff down. So, um, Rapido combined in at, the, at different times at the right time. But, um, yeah, that... That 10 or 15 minute period at the start there where they just really pulled that left hand edge with um, Strange looks, fuck he's quick off over that first 20 metres. Very fast, um, not not shy of taking a hit either. Takes yeah. it into the line. Ran like a back row a couple of times as well. And, um, and caught stains in the, lo- in, the, in, the late, in the second half as well. Showed a good turn of foot to catch him and knock him into touch. And nice passing game on the back of running. Like Likes to run into the line and good, a good short pass on him. So... Um, Yet to see him really sort of throw any big bullets and stuff like that, but um, I'm sure that'll come different times during his career. But it looks like he's got a career in front of him. Um, and Fogarty's put together now two very good outings, <laughs> just very good outings. Absolute um, description of what you want out of a controlling half. Yep. You know, P- pretty strong defence as well, um, and just kicks the absolute crap out of teams. Pinpoint bombs, long kicks, um, short kicks. He's got his kicking games as good as most in the competition, I would say. Question for you: Given how good Hoskins and Smith has been the first couple of weeks, what happens now? You get Horsburgh back, and oh, Horsburgh comes straight into thirteen. Good Smithies on the bench. I would dare say so. Yeah, and you've got another, and there's another one coming back too. Unless they play Horsburgh off the bench as an impact, or Papali off the bench. Because Horsburgh could probably got a few more. Oh, but like Horsburgh can play anywhere in the pack. Yeah. Whereas I think Smithies is limited to obviously an edge or 13. So Obviously, we know who's going. Your Mariotas and Solos, unfortunately, push out. But I suggest, yeah, maybe Horsburgh off the bench. Or, like I said, maybe he starts at 10 and you play Papali off the bench. Imagine Horsburgh coming in after 25 yeah. with the team tired and then playing the next 55, 60 minutes. And the old man out's probably Switching whitehead at the moment. Switching between 13 and an edge. Crowbars in. Yeah, because so Hosking's I'd, done everything he can to keep his job. Yeah. From a super coach point of view, I'm sort of wish we'd followed our own advice, and because we both exactly. mentioned him going to Canberra, uh, and then I think we all got a bit spooked by the actual team makeup more than anything. The price of Hoskins was a little interesting, and yeah, we expected Whitehead to start, which would have meant him playing off the, off the bench, which is still may come, but um, yeah, it's at the moment is absolutely killing it. Super and apologies, land, uh, but at least for week one for suggesting safe path because. Yeah, I don't know. What happened there? I know he missed a couple of... He missed probably two pretty bad I, tackles, but got dragged for the rest of the I, game pretty much. I don't know whether... Just they felt he was out physical or whether Pole was... He wasn't running the ball either, which no, didn't help. I think they just needed Pole. They did some bigger bodies to get him back into it. Uh, the, the thing is, once we get deeper in the season, if he's not that joining lock, I don't know how he fits in a team. Exactly. So, <laughs> uh, and especially when you've got even someone like a Matamua... Um, who did that job in juniors and uh, down the road, you know, even an Adam Dewey can play that 14 role. I was I was underwhelmed by Sullivan. I know there wasn't a great deal of mm. opportunity, but um, I would suggest Caesar starts if he's fit at seven this week. And all of a sudden, it's very interesting to see where they head because down the road, with Adam Dewey looming, maybe Galvin and Dewey might tape up and get us to the end of the year from the last six rounds and yeah, who knows, um, winning a game would be nice for us. It was a good, as you mentioned, 10 or 15 minute period there when the Tigers did actually get on the front foot and um, Appy combined very well with Galvin and did some really nice stuff on his own as well to mm. 
you know, provide points there. Um, get them back into no, the... Appy was actually great, like great in this game. Yeah, 100%. And the second half was sort of a nothing happening half where the most interest was who was Bateman going to shiv. <laughs> he was pretty upset there, wasn't he? <laughs> but that's fine. He does it, you know. He was happy to take them all anyway. Yep. Um, a lot more controlled and, um, you know, creative ball playing from the Raiders than we thought we were going to see out of them mm. at different times this year. And uh, it's a massive positive for those guys. When their forward pack's really on top and dominant, this team could actually really blow some teams away. So, um, big and Levi's re- a good foil again. Big Just rethink cool. on where they're going <laughs> to where they yeah, sit yeah. for this season proper. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, I've mentioned pretty much all the main players where I thought that had an impact on the game. I gave Hosking the three points. Um, it was a try, a try assist, and a whole heap of work <laughs> in the middle of the field. Fogarty with two. Yep. And then I had um, either Strange or Appy for the one. Uh, you pick. I won't be offended. I think give it Probably to Strange. Give it to Strange. Give yeah. it to Strange. I'm not offended by that in the slightest. 21-20, Cowboys over the Knights in Golden Point, who the only time they hit the lead was in the 82nd minute of the whole game. What a strange bloody game that it was. It was really weird because even though they weren't leading, to me the whole second half it just felt like Cowboys were going to win. Yeah. It was just a matter of when. It looked um, like they were going to win by a landslide at one point It was everything was going their way. Game. And even if, like it was a nothing happening first half apart from a couple of Adam Elliott tries, but what did the stats say? But there should have been more happening because Newcastle had plenty of opportunity. Four tries to three. Two out of four conversions played three out of three. Uh, a missed penalty attempt by the Cowboys and a converted attempt from Newcastle. One out of one field goal attempts for the Cowboys and a missed two-point field goal attempt from both sides. 12-0 at half time to Newcastle. 71% completion played 78%. Five line breaks to four. 24 tackle bust to 21. Nine offloads from both sides. Two fours dropouts to one, 374 tackles played, 331. 15 errors to 12, five penalties conceded to 10, five ruck infringements to three, zero inside the 10s against the Cowboys, one against Newcastle. Adam Elliott with 112 supercoach points, Dearden with 76 and Cotter with 70. Super entertaining game, but as we said, a bit of a weird one. Um, Cowboys just couldn't get on the scoreboard till the second half. Um, you mentioned didn't take the lead till 82 minutes, but the errors were just absolutely killing their attack. Mm. And um, the Knights looked pretty disjointed and unable to, again, another team that was unable to provide <coughs> opportunities in their outside edges. I think the the call has to come sooner rather than later on this half setup. Yeah, well, Gamble seemed to get in the way a fair bit when yeah. the ball was trying to get out to the likes of Ponga and the outside men. Um, although a lot of his clean-up efforts in the middle of the field, they could have... You know, could have led to Cowboys points yeah. if he wasn't on that spot to get onto the ball or make a tackle. So, um, interesting one. Uh, yeah, Newcastle, El- Elliot scored <laughs> the first two tries of the match. Another one of those ones with the ran a really good line and some footwork back through the middle of the field against the tiring Cowboys pack and scored their first try. And then Hetherington, of all people, throws <laughs> that lovely ball out of dummy half yeah. for a crash play. Um they really probably should have scored a few more tries in that first half after a pretty dominant display in that first half. They, they had plenty of ball and opportunities and just could not seem to make any of it I work um, to create opportunities. And, but, and there's also just nothing much happening. There was, mm. I, I don't know what their point of attack was supposed to be. Uh, it was a bit confused at times, even when Hastings dug into the line and stuff like that. There was just nothing much happening around it. Yeah, yeah. a lot of just sort of trying to set up play for yeah. set up play for the sake of doing it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Cowboys come out flying in the second half, scoring twice straight off the bat, um, ten minutes or whatever it was in that in the first half. Um, Newcastle managed to somehow get to the outside edge. It was a deflection off a kick and then a grubber to get out to Marzu, but that was really the only top time they seemed to threaten out wide. Um, there with the Marzu try there, but um, yeah, the Cowboys just really got going in that second half. Did in a couple of times running like a back rower into the line to try and crash over for tries and managed to grab one. He was one. good, dude. He was really good, dude. Actually, he's the most, he just played real direct, as you said. And and Chad played pretty well as well. His kicking game was very good. Um, getting the ball in and behind the defence to um, set up, you know, uh, get him into the right position. And then it came with the, you know, the final try with Nanai Grubber in, to, in behind the line for him to score. So, um Holmes had probably one of the worst games I think I've ever seen. <laughs> he seemed to drop every ball that it came to him. He was missing penalty kicks, missing conversions, and the bloke's been kicking at near 90% for the last 12 months. Yeah, I was um, shocked when um, I'd 
had the queue in the rack when they scored because I just the saw nail this conversion. Yeah, absolutely. And then, um, geez, he smoked that one from halfway. Uh, the two point field yeah, goal attempt. Yeah. He smoked, unfortunately, to the Just to the side. It, but but um, Chad was able to get the job done there. Um, yeah. Val had a shocker, as I mentioned. Gay Guy Ponga really looked like the only backs that looked a threat for, for Newcastle. Um, Hastings was. You know, played a decent controlling hand and had some nice kicks. Kai Pierce Paul was decent. Thompson was very good again. Um, he's becoming quickly becoming their best front rower at the moment in this team. And Adam Elliott was superb. Drinkwater felt were very good. Um, the halves took a while to get going, but by the end of the game they were much much more dominant, obviously, than the, yeah. their opposition halves. It was actually Blake Chad's best game. game in a long time. Mm. I know I've said it a few times tonight, but <laughs> um yeah, Nene and um, Tom Alolo were actually uh, – sorry, Griffin Neem and Tom Alolo were decent in the middle of the field. Finiaki did a decent job, but um, Nani and Robson were really good again. Um, and Cotter worked well, his Nani, ass off as you yeah, yeah, sorry, Cotter and Robson were very yeah. good, but Nani was by far their most destructive player again on that edge. We still haven't seen the best to score <coughs> drink water no. a couple of games yet. So whether that's a conscious thing, whether it's again trying to get – their momentum back. It not it hasn't been a bad thing. Not a, not a knock on the town. Obviously they're winning. So um very interesting to see how much he gets involved down the road. As I said, the feel more direct. Chad, I guess he's got a bit more confidence, kicked well, and uh, a much more to running did and really, really looked um looked at goods here, I thought. So well, Drinkwater really seems to get on the back of real fast momentum when they're swooping down the field, more yeah. so than sort of having to play set to the – like set plays to positions on the field. Yeah. He's more of the ad-lib guy that gets his off the back of two really fast play the balls and then, you know, fires. Still threw a nice pass to Felt for a try. Um, but, yeah, he's not braining it like he was at the back end of last year. Um, Elliot got three points for mine. He scored two tries, did a shit ton of work through the middle of the field. Um, I know they lost, but without him they would have lost by 30. Mm. Um and then I went with Nan, uh, Nanai or Dearden for the two and either way switch them two around. But Go Dearden two, Nanai one. <laughs> what do you make of, given it is a one-point game, still flattering Newcastle? Yes. What do you make of them? Just but they, they, had, they had so many opportunities. They should have been well in front by half time. Oh, easily, and I yeah. don't think this becomes a game if they take those opportunities early in That's the match. That's true. Um, I think, as you said, it comes down a lot to what way they will, how they're going to structure these. I'm almost starting to feel halves. like that they should look at playing. They're missing a trick with Cotter. They should be playing um, Cogger at um, at seven and Hastings at six almost. Uh, whether I don't know who that upsets, who makes happy, but I don't know what else. Yeah, or I, even I the other way around, even Cogger at six I mean, doesn't it, really it, matter. It doesn't matter this um, day and age. It doesn't particularly, really. they both play on either side of the field. But, but as I said last week, I don't think you can carry them plus Phoenix Crossland, hmm. plus eventually Braley at some point. Yes. So they're going to have plus Gamble. So I think at some point they have to make a decision on which way they go. But once Braley comes back, well, yeah, maybe yeah, both well, for are mine it ends it. up being a, a shootout between Crossland or Gamble who has that 14 position mm. because... Co um, Cogger's just getting wasted at the moment. He's been used as a battering ram in the middle of yeah, the field yeah, yeah. as a as a hooker, and um, it's by no means doing any many favors for all the team favors with their attacks. So. Especially when you know what he provides. We've seen what he provides, and it might have the call might come tomorrow. Probably asked you now. They're what? Uh, yeah, O from two. So they need to mar start making uh, having a look at that. Anyway. Uh, the next game was another cracker, 30 to 26, a storm over the Warriors. For those of us like me who tipped the Warriors, um, and in a couple of tipping comps was the only person that tipped the Warriors. I was very oh, happy with myself, <laughs> uh, including this one. With five minutes to with go. With five minutes to go, up by eight. Unfortunately, the operation was a success and the patient died. So, <laughs> and I mean, we got beaten by, you know, one of the all-time great, Finishes of a game. Ever, they so. panic really. They shit the bed. Yeah. They did not provide a static line for that next five minutes. That five minutes where they were under pressure, their defensive line was all over the place. Yeah. There was players rushing. There was players sliding. There was just opening up holes all over the place. Um, that Pappenhausen try realistically could have been called back for an obstruction. Uh, yeah. The the try with three minutes to go. Um, but it is you know they, it was fine. 
they weren't going to stop him anyway. But um, if you wanted to get technical on it, there was there was someone in and around the the area. Um, we didn't even mention the one in the uh, Bulldogs game. What'd you make of the referee obstruction there? No, that was bull- he was, he was As Trindle's if never going to stop him. Stop him no. yeah. <laughs> but he does deny him taking up a position to be directly in front of him, which is the only way he does stop him. Yes, yeah. you know, a really good shot under the ribs or around the hips, um, and being directly in front of him, but. Anyway, yeah, yeah, back to it you. It could have been a try. Uh, I, th- I think when the ref gets involved, they just basically have to... Call like, it back. They can't turn around and then they just, you know... Because the, the team that gets affected by it turns around and goes, oh, well, it was the referee. What's the fucking ref? You know, yeah. that's that's the NRL getting in the way. If I can, it becomes something bigger than what it is, but... um, <coughs> Yeah, so they, they really yeah panicked and... Um, let that game get away from them, I thought. Uh, five tries out of four, four out of five conversions for Melbourne, two out of four for the Warriors, one out of one penalty attempts, played three out of three, a missed two-point field goal attempt for Melbourne, 18-6 at half time to Melbourne, 82% completion, played 76%, 260-plus running metres and 129-plus post-contact metres for the Warriors. Seven line breaks to four, 33 tackle busts to 29, eight offloads to nine, three force dropouts to zero, 287 tackles played 283. Six errors from Melbourne, eight from the Warriors. Eight penalties conceded by Melbourne, four by the Warriors. Three ruck infringements to one. Pappenhausen with 128 supercoach points. Dallin with Tenny Zelezniak with 99. And Jerome Hughes with 88. Massive momentum shifts in this game. Yep. It was the story of it. Um, Melbourne, you know, was just well on top. The Warriors couldn't get out of their own way again. I've got, it's just another team that just... Dropped every second to- every second set that they touched the ball, they just dropped it in that first half. Could not control the ball, and the, uh, which obviously leads to no field position, no good attacking ball, and just having to tackle your ass off for the majority of this first half. And a um, couple of times they were left wanting. Um, obviously, yeah. nice try to Dallin in that first half, but that was really the only positive from from yeah. the Warriors in that first half. Um, Storm just made them pay. They they were tough, consistent, grinding through the middle of the field. Harry Grant got out and, uh, and caused heaps of problems in and around the ruck. And then Jerome Hughes was fantastic off the back of it. His finishing touch in this game was a big part of what um, what got the Storm where they needed to be. He, he's, he's finished with his kicking game. Some beautiful um, passes and grubbers in behind the line really set up the the, the start of this game and, and finished it as well at the, at the back end. So... He was massive um, to start this match. Pappy just being in the right. He just is well, always he, in the right was, fucking spot. <laughs> like, he scored off the same play on both sides of the field. Yeah. The, the absolute mirror image. They must, you know, they obviously run that play that many times. Yeah. And and it was a training run play. It was. Like, it, yeah. it was. And even if he's not in the right spot, within two or three steps, he's got the pace to make up for it anyway. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> if there's that half a gap and he accelerates into it, good luck getting... If you don't get a good grab on him the first go, he's gone. And, yeah, yeah it just that's exactly what happened. Um, made him pay that way. Which uh, is good that he... Like, it has been two years. It's great uh, to see him actually... Oh, the fact that he's still got that acceleration and, yeah. and he's not scared to try and move laterally as well. He's still stepping and yeah. doing, doing all that. Um had some fucking. He was taking the ball into the line at forwards and popping yeah. offloads as well. Like that try where he put Hughes back down the middle of the field and then Meany runs and scores yeah, yeah. under the post. That was all off Pappenhausen. Like that was a front rower's hit up yeah. that turned into an offload <laughs> and then they go and score down the other end of the field. Um, yeah, he was tremendous. Uh, and then half time comes and the Warriors don't drop a ball for forty uh, for thirty five minutes. Well, <laughs> it's, just it's the same as game before. You're watching second. I was watching second half and it, at no point felt like Warriors were going to lose for the last five minutes. Did not make was, a single mistake for thirty five minutes. Just went through, did everything they needed to do, controlled the middle of the field, dominated the middle of the field for a good thirty five minutes. Nice shifts of the ball. Tua Piki was getting involved with some nice footwork and some passing in the outside backs. Uh, Johnson was doing his thing. Metcalf was tremendous. Mm-hmm. I thought Metcalf had a ripper of a game. Um, didn't really come out on the stat sheets and the super coach points and all no, the rest no, of it, but I think he was much better than some of those mention. numbers he's, he, that came through. They've just extended him for two years. So yeah. He was fantastic. He looks like he's the long-term six now. Got good pace, um, footwork at the line, and um, you know a bit of a short pass on him as well. So, um, yeah, he... he 
he caused a lot of problems for for them, especially down that left hand edge. And Johnson was doing the the work on the right hand side. Yeah. I thought Fanua Blake probably needed a few more minutes, maybe another ten minutes in that second half might have made a bit of a difference, just to add a little bit more punch in the middle of the field and really sort of ream home that advantage, which might have, who knows, <laughs> not for me to say, but. Yeah. Um, I would have been playing for another 10 minutes. Uh, and then three and a half minutes to go. <laughs> Pappenhausen scores. And then uh, some really good ball playing, athleticism, a fucking eight foot jump in the air and the human pretzel fucking robbed us of 360 bucks for Ugh. the punting disaster class. <laughs> and that put down. Unbelievable. Without how the left hand doesn't touch before the ball and uh, the way he gets himself... He was dead set six to eight foot in the air. Yeah, I know. Like <laughs> I, enjoyed, I enjoyed Corey Parker's analysis of it on a Sunday afternoon where he said he was six to eight metres in the air. I was like, well, that was, wow, that was quite That's a the leap. Take, he's, he's six metres in the crowd. I was like, okay, wow. And if Dallin doesn't duck his head and just grabs well, him, ifs and buts, you know what I mean? Like, and Dallin like, had him covered, end of the day. Yeah. It's the finish that... But if he doesn't... Because he went down to try and yeah, drive, yeah. whereas if he just sort of stood up and just chested him, yeah. he probably ends up uh, fucking in the cameraman's yeah. lap, but... You're not to know that. You know, <laughs> a whole you're different like, story. How do you, you know, can you tackle the bloke in the air when he's trying to do that? Like, it's a whole fucking thing, That's really. That's true, but though, actually. Surely not. Surely. <laughs> who, knows, who knows anymore? But um, actually incredible. Even on that last set, there was nothing happening set to that last shift. Yeah, yeah. And then even and it was then, just two really but even the way it shifted. Passes. Yeah, but even then, it's like, okay, Dallin's got him covered. Mm. And anyway. He jumps from three metres out and fucking yeah, and eight scores. foot in the air in, and in turns himself incredible. inside out and <laughs> gets in, the ball yeah. down. There's, as um, Vonnie said, that's going to be on the reels for the rest of time. Like that oh, will exactly. now be an advertising. Xavier Coates will go down in history yep. <laughs> for the rest of time for that one. one, one you know, play. I don't know how we see it in most games, but God, it was absolutely amazing. What, what do, just a couple of quick ones. Joe Chan, mm. the super coach Chiefy that's come in, but he's really Big, hammered himself a spot. And yeah. Lorero um, got through a mountain of work too. Lorero, I can never show his name right. Lorio. The arrow, yeah, looks um looks the ultimate fit for him to be honest. It looks yeah. like he's fit in really well there. Um, allows King to do a little bit of work in different parts of the field, whereas Liero is now just locked down in that middle and yeah, getting through mountain of work. Um, probably obviously it's going to take away from his try scoring where he was scoring a few tries on the yeah. edge there before, but um, yeah, he's doing everything that the team needs him to do. Yeah. They're still probably a shade off the better forward packs in the comp and. Will struggle at times uh, in the middle of the field against some of these other packs, and they did in the second half of this game. Let's be honest. Yeah. And if the Warriors were on from the start, it could have been a different game. But um, yep. But that said, they've now matched. Awesomely Penrith good team. They've no Munster, no Nelson. And and they've gone two weeks in. They've matched Penrith and matched the Warriors. So, by the same token, you could argue Warriors have shit the bed twice. Yes. In two weeks. So what next? And they've got. Um, Canberra going over there this week, which is very interesting. I think they need a kill. I think ultimately they just need a win. <coughs> Absolutely, they do. Um, but it's all it's coming from their outside backs again in their defence. Um, Rogers sharpened up one edge, and Barry was actually pretty good in this game. Yeah. But they're coming back inside the centres, or they're they're hitting the wingers or the the halves on the inside of the centres, which is causing obviously defensive issues, and that's where a lot of these points are coming from. Yeah. Um, whether it's the second row was clocking off on their job on the inside shoulder of the of the um, the halves or the halves just not being able to control a one on one tackle, but that's um yeah that's where they've got a, f a f quite a few problems with their defence at the moment. So yeah, you're going to see a lot of teams targeting their halves and and their wingers. So they won't be the only ones though. There's a few teams that no, yeah, absolutely that every team well, obviously, realistically yeah. has got one or two blokes there that yeah. are questionable. So um, three points, Pappy and two to Hughes, or which way have you seen this? Yep. And I gave one to Dallin just from, you know, what his, um, oh, his work yeah. early. Um, some tries and he did a whole heap of work again Actually, coming out of the bag. He, he dragged them kicking and screaming every, at times. First tackle know. every set pretty yeah. much. He was he was making hit-ups into the teeth of the yep. defence. and Yep. No, I'm fair. I'm fine with that one. Yeah, Sunday Arvo, an evening. 21 to 14. Manly over the Chooks in a very, very impressive outing to my eye. I'd go as far to say... I think mainly the best team I saw all weekend. Close to it. Yeah. Oh, uh, ultra impressive. And what did the stats say there? Got a bit ugly in the second half, but yeah, mainly 21, Roosters 14, three tries apiece. 
Two out of three conversions played, one out of three for the Roosters. Two out of two penalty attempts for the Manly side and one out of one field goal attempts. 12-10 at half time, 74% completion played 72%. 516 running plus running metres and 255 plus post contact metres for Manly, which you don't see that often, <laughs> to be honest. Four line breaks to six, 37 tackle bust to 31, 13 offloads to nine. 257 tackles made by Manly, 358 made by the Roosters. 13 errors to 20 from the Sydney Roosters. Four penalties conceded to nine, two ruck infringements to one. Three inside the 10 against the Roosters. Tedesco with 103 supercoach points. Brooks with 80 and Tyrell May with 69. A lot of those errors would have come from their back four, I reckon, and, or back five, and or their outside backs more so than Teddy. Teddy was phenomenal in this game. <laughs> Teddy was brilliant. Uh, but, the, yeah, the rest of them, Sway did not cover himself in glory. Oh. Marty didn't touch a ball. Can't even kind of call him. Well, that's because I captain him, so yeah. Me. <laughs> so you're watching and pretty closely. <laughs> but I just never went to him. Do something. And then, um, but that all being said, Manly's physicality, like they pinned them. It was like, it was similar to the Penrith game. They just pinned them and they gave East no hope for an hour of getting out of this. And, and the points were a Teddy break and a um, Dom Young intercept. Kick across. Intercept. Oh, the kick across. The kick across. And then uh, the intercept from Dom Young back to Teddy, back to Young. And it was beyond that, they were never a hope in this game. Manly had so much and possession. And they didn't just do it in the forwards. Like they did it for parts in the forwards, mm. but it was only a couple of guys. It was Pasekas, Aloe, yes. Olakawatu. And, and, and they lined Olakawatu up at Kiri for, <laughs> for a good half hour. But Most of the physicality come from their outside backs. Mm -hmm. Getting the ball out, early ball out to these big, strong outside yeah. backs who were just causing all sorts of problems. Um, yeah, uh, Roosters really determined to set up a platform to win through the middle of the field and really tried to take that that fight on early in the middle of the game. But Manly just went, fuck it. We'll have yeah. two hit-ups in the middle and then we're going to – we're using our speed guys on the outside <laughs> edges and good luck fucking dealing with that because they did. They had all sorts of problems yeah. trying to shut down the likes of Cool uh, Tommy getting involved out there, Brooks dancing around, throwing a few nice short balls inside and outside to the likes of Ola Kalatu and uh, it's the, the other outside back who was on the, on the other side of the field. Brooks was just all over the place. <laughs> on Isn't he just <laughs> loving life? You know? like, <laughs> it's amazing. Just popping up every, like two and three times every set yep. of six, just on one side of the field, on the other side of the field. <laughs> yep. Following Tommy around like his little lap dog, just going, where, where are we going, Tommy? Where are we going? <laughs> Come on, Tommy. Come with me. Come with me. <laughs> hitting Burbo on an edge, hitting Olakawatu on the other edge. It was, um, yeah, really good to see, to be honest. But, um, yeah, they just spent more time on the edges, just like – if Ola Kawatu doesn't break you down, I'll give it to the quick bloke on the outside and then we'll come back in and have a couple of, a couple of plays around the middle. But they they did not want to get involved too much with that. Like The yeah. Roosters wanted to slug it out in the middle of the field and Manly just went, no, we, we don't need to. We'll mm. just we'll burn you on the edges. We'll come back and play a little bit in the middle. But yeah. we're not going to stay here all day and play in the middle of the field. We'll get you where we know we can get you. And they stretched them like most of, you know, a lot of, not a lot of teams stretch the roosters like that on the outside edges, but there was <laughs> there was some problems for for them in this one. I watched this and thought, geez, they could use Billy Smith. Mm. I don't. I think Swali was a bit found out. If I'm being completely honest, hundred yeah, uh, percent. And Tupo is always solid, but the rest of them, yeah, I, I think you hit now. Tom Young's trying to fit. Uh, he just, just got there. You know? He just got yeah, there. Can't exactly. you? Yeah. Um, maybe. Maybe this Seabold can coach. Maybe this, you know, that he Seabold can coach. Well, if you know your team's that much better in the outside backs, like, why try to slug it out in the middle of the field? Yeah. You know, you've got a couple of guys that can take but if that you, one, the, the irony of that two. is, if you were to interview 100 people in the street, 85 of them would say that on paper, because they've been told Roosters had the better outside backs, mm. and they were outclassed here. Ball in hand, maybe, but... Yeah, in attacking The ball's not they, getting there. Do they have better highlight reels? Of course they do, but... <laughs> Yeah, the ball's not the ball is not getting there. Is a very way, nice way to put it. And once again, apart from Teddy, these hard that they they need to address this. Mm. They cannot, uh, you know, you know, keep being two years now being bullish on them. Uh, tell people, yeah, I think Chuck can still win the comp. They can't win the comp playing like this. They need Tedesco and Manu to both be taking turns at going in and playing halves. Yes, because the other I two. Thought, well, aren't doing Kiri's out this week, and I saw so there's an article, you know whatever, maybe Sanders Smith, they should just put Manu straight to six and they should 
bring back Billy Smith on the, in the centres. Yeah. Yeah. Or just yeah. let them both. Is he injured? Yeah, yeah he was injured. injured. Yeah. I don't know how long it was. But that's the way you'd But play. they can both interchange in there as well. Yeah, they, You can they, they play, play a bit of a way. hybrid of thing. Of course you, you know? can. Manu, go can. back and play two tackles at fullback and Teddy's going to play six for two tackles. Mm-hmm. You come back onto an edge, we'll let Walker and Kiri finish the show out and then next set, Manu jump in there and play a bit of six. and Because at the moment, what's happening is Walker and Kiri do not combine at all. No. They do... They, you never see them pass, passing the ball to each other. No. You, you never... Kiri only ever gets the ball and seems to go backwards or sideways. Yeah. He won't go into the line. He's obviously concussion history and all the rest of it, but I see him going backwards more than I see him going towards an attacking line. Unless and it's that's, a support. That's him sweeping support around player, yeah. looking for somebody else yeah, to yeah. take that hit up. And Walker just goes. To, Walker just takes the ball and goes directly straight at who's, whoever's in front of him. Yeah. So that limits options on what can happen on the, uh, on the back Unless end of the play. Unless they're in a 20 because then he'll throw a rainbow ball. Yeah. But that's also... They need to be on the front foot for him to do that. That's right. Yeah. They need to be rolling through the, the middle, and then there, there was not a single space indication on the outside edges. of back foot half play in this game because they had no idea how they were getting out of their twenty. Both of them kick long, but they don't know exactly where it's going to end up. They just, no. you know, they've got decent range in their kicks, but the the precision's not there. Um, Kiri doesn't really kick short much anymore these days, and it's all more Walker having to put in the grubbers and stuff in and around the the goal line. But they are so far apart from each other they just there's no cohesion at all in their halves at the moment and no. it's really concerning there's no cohesion, trying to get no cohesion in. in their spine because cheese doesn't really mm. play to him either like, he was a non-factor in this game and so goes trying to get in and get involved and yeah. he is playing a bit of six at the moment and straightening the attack up yeah. and he's he's the basis of anything that's good that happens in the outside backs realistically at the moment yeah because Kiri's sort of running him himself into corners and walker's just getting tackled, basically, or just catch and pass and doesn't want anything to do with it once it goes out. He's not yeah. following around and trying to back up for an offload or anything like that. He just distributes the ball and it's done with. Yeah. So, yeah. I... It, it, I was, yeah, I was disappointed. I think Lindsay, Lindsay Collins uh, tried his ass off again. He's sorry if yeah, you go look at those. He was the last man standing, you know, clutching it at... at Whoever it was, as they went past every time, uh, Terrell May was again fantastic. It's brilliant, but you know yeah. it's a long way to get off your lineup. I th- I, I would be shocked if the uh, team list comes out tomorrow. Angus Crichton isn't back in his seventeen. Apparently, he was. Cheese and Jared were okay, but didn't yeah. have much of an impact. And the, the rest of them really. I don't know, oh, Cry- uh, what's he was good. Um, Tupinor Baker. Oh, he tried. Uh, but- Baker Butcher. Butch- Matt Butcher. Butcher. Matt Butcher yeah, was good yeah. off the bench. He's in Brisbane now. Yeah. yeah but. Um, I think you see his brother back this week. I think you see Angus Crichton back this week, I would suggest. Apparently Crichton had a, f- a phenomenal game in uh, reserve grade. I mean, it's reserve grade, but it was a pretty strong reserve grade. It's used to play okay. and all those sort of blokes. Yeah, but, yeah, yep. um, I reckon you see both of them back this week. And I would hope they look towards um, Manu at six and bringing Billy Smith back. Even his fit. Yeah, yeah. Radley and Butcher were pretty good in the middle of the field. Yeah. Strong efforts. Dom Young had a pretty good debut, realistically. Didn't do too yeah, much sure. wrong. Was okay. Well, he, he, um, yeah. It's a boot game. What, was what involved in the, most of their points. So. Yeah, and Terrell May and Teddy were by far the Roosters' best players on the field. Um, Jake and Brown did an okay job in the middle of the field. Paseca was their big guy in the middle. Uh, really did some damage there. Um, Brooks was very good, as we mentioned. But, um, yeah, the likes of Cooler... Um, Tommy was just causing all sorts of problems on the edges. Yep. And um, Ola Kawatu was great again. He's really firm and in as one of the better back rowers in the game. He's he's really stamped this first two weeks that he's, you know, wants to go wherever he's heading. Especially attacking-wise, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and he's put on some nice hits in the last couple of weeks as well. Like, it, it was our concern of him not being picked for origin last year, but he's trending the right way. Yeah, I, I think... We've all known what Luke Brooks's game is, and unfortunately he's played in a club that's too stupid to enable that. Um, and I, I know Hastings, Hastings, Brooks were never really used as a combo. They always want to try and grow by Dewey, and so they never really got the crack. But when he's swinging on the outside of DCE, who can give him good ball yeah. or provide a kick or something for him to chase, and then you've got Tommy and the likes of Cooler, yes. Garrick. Yeah, the other difference is when you've got arguably the best half in the game and arguably the best fullback in the game, if you fuck something up, it doesn't really matter because at some point, 
you're going to get back in control or they'll put you in the right spot in the first place. But there's just so many more options for him to go to. Yes. You know what I mean? He's not running around and going, oh, fuck, where do, where, where yeah. do I go now? He's do I just this, flick yeah. it to a winger or do I just mm. drop it back inside for a forward? No, he's got a forward coming on the inside. He's got Tommy yeah. on the sweep. He's got his winger holding the line on the outside. So he now has three different opportunities to play ball. Yeah. Or he can grub it for himself. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Which he did a couple of times and almost come up with some points yeah. as well. So. Happy for him. Good luck to him. Yeah, absolutely. But I, as I said, I've, I'm on record and I'll stand by this that uh, you've covered every other point I want to make here. I thought that Manly were the best team I saw. If we're saying Roosters are a proper team, Manly, I thought, com- complex about wise. playing him. Yeah, yeah 100%. And, um, and pin them and, and they had no, and Roosters had no answer. So looking forward. The team knocking their front door down is what I, I want to see them answer that question. Yeah. But at we're going moment... to get it in the next few weeks, but. At the moment, attacking wise, they look like the Christmas and team. And they're around. becoming and they're fit as fuck too. Yes, absolutely. But they they can be. I've, I spent last year raving about Newcastle, how much I liked watching them play. I've really enjoyed both Manly's games this year. Hundred percent. And um, as much as it might pay me at times, and as much as I'm dreading watching a game here with Johnny, uh, they uh, uh, are the, so far the real deal with round two. But mm. I think they are so. What are we doing? Three points. Well, I don't normally go straight out with the super coach, but I pretty much went straight out with super coach in this one. I had Teddy with three. I think he was tremendous. He was individually the best player on the field. Mm-hmm. Brooks with two. And then toss up between May and Olakawatu. Yeah. Olakawatu was destructive, but May probably got through a bit more work. So, oh, well, Mine was three Brooks, two Teddy, one on Kawatu. The only reason Brooks got three is because Manly won. Mm-hmm. But if, oh, I thought Teddy was fantastic. And I'm happy to do that. Yeah, individually, I just thought he was by far the best player on the field. So yeah. that's why I went with three for him. Brooks two, and then, then we'll give Olakwai two. Olakwai two, one. one. Yep. And then we got this. 38-0. <laughs> we got the, this. The, fir- the first shutout in Dolphins history. Oh, uh, really? I think it's okay. the highest score in Dolphins. It's the biggest margin in Dolphins history. I don't say high score because I haven't done that proper research. Yeah, it was but the it's the first time they've, they've not conceded any points. And, and the Dragons look like the Dragons that we all tipped to run last... What happened here? For about 50 minutes. They did put up a fight for half an hour. They did, you know, uh, Dolphin scored a few points at the start and then they got a bit gritty and grubby in the middle. But um, seven tries to nil, five out of seven conversions for the Dolphins. A sin bin to the Dragons, 10 nil at half time. 90% completion, played 77%. 489 plus running metres for the Dolphins. Seven line breaks to five. 28 tackle bus, played 27 Eight offloads to nine. A force dropout from the Dragons team. A 40-20 from the Dragons side. 336 tackles played, 348. Five errors to 12. Six penalties conceded to three. Two ruck infringements against the Dolphins. One inside the 10 against the Dragons. Hamaso with 94 supercoach points. Jeremy Marshall King with 80. Asako with 80. Three other Dragons before you got down to Sloan on 65 for the Dragons. Who was very good, actually. He, he was good. Put in heaps playing. of effort. He, like he was the so only one trying his ass for 80 minutes. I don't say anyone. Yeah, probably the only one. Uh, Jack Bird tried hard. He did yes, have a lot of luck. He really tried his ass off, I thought, as well. But It's one um, thing you can't take away from Jack Bird. Yeah, uh, he was, I don't think I've ever seen a game where he hasn't given yeah. <laughs> plenty and he had of a few, effort. You know, he could have caught a crossfield bomb. There's a few things. He got a couple of breaks. He got, you know, another day, he almost comes up with a couple of tries and... But um, Sloan, we'll get it off the way out of the way because he was a highlight. Sloan, his support play was fantastic again. He, he was the only one that looked like even creating anything off his own bat. Uh, and his defence was as good as it could have been. It almost did on two different occasions. Yeah, he I beat remember. someone and got yeah. bundled in a touch. And then there's another one he chipped for himself and Hammer just... Chipped a little just, bit too early. Or Hammer just won yeah. the race, which was yeah. good. It was a good clash, actually. But um, it was the old, I guess, the old-fashioned Bennett dragged them in for a week, kicked the, their fucking asses, and they came <laughs> out and... Physical, were physical and just belted. A few of the changes of the he made had big effects as well. well. We thought we saw Aiken it, coming we back in, in the, in the Katoa preview. coming back in. Katoa played the best game I've ever seen him play. Obviously, the only young fella. It's only well, a year and a bit no, um, no, I, that I, we've I, seen I in his resume, but that. he was fantastic. He, beautiful touch. His kicking was good too. Really nice soft passes. Yeah, yeah. there's really nice soft uh, soft hands with a few of the balls that he threw. Uh, Dolphins started hot. Both teams tried to grind, but the Dragons looked flat. They come out and just didn't look enthusiastic. Mm. Like the, the the effort levels from the week before in their forwards compared to this week was well, you got, you drastic. Got, um, you got pinged during the week for mentioning fatigue. <laughs> and I'm not necessarily mentioning fatigue because effort counts for a lot as well. But 
I think there would have been a, just this big sense of hype. We, we the letdown. Of yeah. um, being a, as a dragon to win round one. If you come out and win round one. Um, Best effort we've seen in years. Yeah, and, and then and you come back and it's like, well, the job's, you don't want to say it, but subconsciously we're the on job's the right half track, done. Guys. Yeah, we're, like now yeah. we're sweet. The, the other strand of the narrative is maybe Titans are just completely shit, but that's the Quite other. Quite possibly. The other, the <laughs> yeah, we, don't know, we don't know yet, but um, it just felt like that. It felt like effort was, there was oozing effort from the Dolphins and it wasn't from the Dragons. Yeah, no, 100%, especially early in the game. Um, 10 nil lead, and then the Dragons managed to sort of grind back into an arm wrestle. The 40-20 helped swing a bit of momentum and got them back into at least a, f a fight for the, the rest of the first half. Dolphins probably bombed a couple of opportunities with a, you know just a, an error here and there where they could have put a bit more pressure on but weren't able to. Um, the second half started the same as the first did. The Dragons seemed flat again coming out into the second half when you thought you really thought going in at ten nil half time they they would have you thought they would have been happy going in at ten nil half time because it should have been more. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, it would then have, they, they would have been ecstatic. They come time. out and start as flat as they did in the second half, and um, yeah, they, they, they just couldn't get the mo any momentum going. Uh, Nichols barges over for a try, <laughs> which we love to see. I don't know what it is about that bloke, but he's still got a cult figure going yeah. <laughs> ever since he was. Um, getting cheered on at the Rabbitohs what, five years ago or <laughs> whatever it was. But um, really like to see him doing well. And he had a fantastic game in this one, actually. Um, he was one of their better forwards. Um, they just continued to put the pressure on uh, and then really started attacking the outside backs of the Dragons, like getting the ball out wide and just pressuring the likes of Sully and Jack Bird and just continued continued efforts in defence and eventually they just broke open. About 25 minutes to go, the heads went down and the Dragons, I think they pretty much realised that they were yep. cooked. Uh, they, they they had nothing left in the legs and the Dolphins were just coming home strong. Bostock was bossing it out on that left-hand edge. I wanted to mention him. Fuck, he yeah. was going good. He was just... He seems like that prototype winger. A lot a lot like um, the young bloke from the Cowboys uh, was... That had a ripper game last week. Oh, Labor. Uh, Labor. Yeah. Just tall, rangy, fast, mm. um, bit of power in the, in their build as well. Yep. Uh, you know, you're gonna they're gonna fill out a little bit more in coming years, but have just have fantastic footwork and balance and speed and um, give him half an opportunity. He was all over it. He was, he's pretty good in the air too. Yes. Oh, he's tall. I think he's six. He's six foot plus. So he's and yeah, he used that to his advantage. Obviously. Um, the good thing is him and Max Plath are both good in this game. Like. Plath was fantastic. And he was what, Ray, Ray, Jones, Ray Stone Jr. Like he's, um, yeah, nugget he's, bloke. They, I can. He's, um, we, we, we want to start seeing some young blood bleed through. We got to see that. We got to see. I reckon he's going to fill out to be, he's going to be like a Hannett type. Yeah, Give yeah. Him five years, you yeah. put on a bit more size and he would just be That's like your, cool. your Ben Hannett monster in the middle of the field. Yeah. <laughs> just eating blokes up. Yeah. Getting into that gritty, <laughs> nasty stuff because he seemed pretty. He seemed pretty happy getting into the shitty yeah. stuff in the middle of the field. Um, he's got the width in, in the shoulders, and yeah, there's, there's a bit about that kid. He's got a good attitude. Yeah. I like it. No, and, and and we knew we said before, and Aitken's the worker that they probably missed last week. And Josh Kerr was very good again, um, was, physical, yeah. um, and and really. Uh, I think he's enjoying playing against some of his old <laughs> old mates there because <laughs> there's a bit of lip I think along yeah. the way, but um, he was good again. I, I you know, across the board, you can give ticks to every single Dolphins yeah. player. Last really. twenty minutes, the um, the the effort and um, continued defensive effort just up and fucked off for the Dragons. They just yeah. packed yeah. it in the, the yes. last twenty minutes. It's like, oh, it's going to be what it's going to be. <laughs> They're going to yeah. keep just keep scoring tries here, and and they did. Um, and I'm pretty sure Flanagan caught him out in that. Basically, said they fucking shut up shop and. Yeah, you just good packed enough. in for that last 20 yeah. minutes and Hamaso had a field day. <laughs> he was yes. just running past people and causing all sorts of problems. And you can throw a few of the other outside backs in there as well who, who had, had some good times out there. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, I thought Rava and Lomax were okay, but and Sloan tried as hard as anyone on the field. He was really good. Um, Sue and DeBellin were probably the best forwards for the Dragons. Um, DeBellin's another one that just works and works and works, mm -hmm. but... Missing that X factor that he had, obviously, before the time off. Um, he won't mention that. Uh, the whole 17 of the the Dolphins just had seemed to have a very good effort in them. Like yep. they, there wasn't really anyone out there that didn't look like they were having a good crack. And um, 
they all had pretty decent matches. Jeremy Marshall King, as I mentioned, probably didn't deserve to get back on the field, but had a really good input into this game. Flegler Kafusi were really good in the middle of the field. Yeah. Um, did plenty of work there. You mentioned Plath was very strong. Herbie and Osaka look very good when given opportunities with the ball in hand. Like they're, they're just so hard to tackle yes. <laughs> when they get get good ball. Um, yeah, Katoa for mine was close to one of the best performances in the match. Just the way he was shifting, he was going into the line as well, not across the line. And some of his ball playing was fantastic. So, and Hamaso was three points. Yep, I gave Katoa two. Yep. And then I had um, either Plath or Nichols for the one. I had Marshall King, and we didn't we did touch on it, but one of the all time great Falcons. Jeez. Then came back on and he, and he hit a couple of crash bays and looked good. Uh, or Bostock should have been category or, one. Or um, <laughs> he should have been. Or um, who did you just mention? I just had a Nichols and Plath. Or oh, Plath. No. I'll give it to Plath actually. I think yeah, give it to Plath. But Bostock's. Very, very hard done by. Absolutely. To and Jeremy Moss King. And there. Nichols. Nichols had a fantastic game as so well. But. Just, that, that was a really hard one for me to come through. And um, Yeah, we'll go We'll go for the record. Hannah Max Katoa Fuss, and Phil Plath. A, there we go. Having a crack. Very good. And, yeah, really enjoyable round of footy. Uh, really enjoyable round of review, actually. And Dolphins now head into the bye. Yep. The Titans and the Tigers. Nice. So it's not a bad... Not a bad little month for them ahead. Especially with the kick in. Like they, they got the kick in the ass they needed at yeah. the very start of the season. So, so they, they, they can, um, <laughs> though I'm sure they've probably had three or four days off. I have a few days off and then get back into it this week. So, a, a good, like I said, good little month if you're a Dolphins fan. It's close to sold out there. I'll mention crowds because the crowds were getting fantastic. Mm. It, it was full there. I don't know if it's sold out officially, but it was full there. And there's plenty of fantastic crowd shots. Panthers sold out. Uh, Shark Park was sold out. Well, there's another sell out along the way. Where was it? Oh, Four Pines was sold out, mm-hmm. and they got thirty five thousand plus at SunCorp. Um, so really, really and good. And TV numbers are massive too. At and, the moment. and TV numbers are uh, very good. So the game's humming along, and everything's looking healthy. It's it's sizing up as a we, we Sir Peter. In. He's doing the what job. A turnaround for <laughs> what two and a half, three years he's been in the position. You know, we can always whinge about officiating and things like that, but the game is actually airborne. He's kicking goals. They've they've built. Uh, they've gone from being almost broke to having hundreds of millions of dollars of assets here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> they've um, they, we've got a four another four years of Vegas. Uh, can't wait for Magic Round again, and obviously you got to do Magic. It just happens. It's Magic it's Round next. It just year, says won't you something about you. You know, having conviction, courage of your convictions, and just going with like yeah. setting a plan and just fucking headlong straight into it. And I think there's an element of if you tell people this is the right... Like I'm if you, building if you this hammer and we're the going right this way. product, yeah. which is, it is the best sport in Australia to watch. Mm. Don't get me wrong, we're both, you know, diehard cricketers, but it, this is the best sport to watch. And if you can expose that to the right fan base and get people excited about it, it it is brilliant. I've really enjoyed this weekend and optimistic for the rest of the year. Obviously, there's a lot of talks about grassroots and all that kind of stuff. And there, mm-hmm. obviously, there'd be a lot to look at if you got in behind the scenes and yeah. wanted to look at everything that that, that does go on. And but, I hope, um, you know, down the road, it's just, the top level if this of podcast the games, grows well enough, I'd love to spend time talking to people from yeah, that walk absolutely. alone. Reach out to us. Would love to, to, to know more. And, um, you know, we've had a bit of association with Panda Juniors years ago and a few people that work at that level. But... Um, yeah, the top level of the game's going yeah. as strong as it has yeah. for a long, long time. Definitely. Um, we need to find a pot plant for the weekend, Barn, to drag had, it to tone down. I had quite a few pot plants, and they a, all had a number six or seven on their back, yeah. to be honest with you. Uh, who, who are you, who are you <laughs> I started with name? Ilias, and then I went with Trindle, okay. and I ended up settling on Walker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sam Walker in that Roosters game, I think he had three runs, missed five tackles. He did make 20, but missed a couple of crucial ones that led directly to points and an error and just really did not seem to have any impact on any no. backline plays for the I'm Roosters a dumb shit. I have him in my suitcase team, but he's going. Mm. He's going this week. I don't have a choice. I'm sorry. Um, I thought just assume you go Ilias. I'll go Ilias as a pot plant. And um, I hope he can go back to reserve grade and find something because oh, there's, there's bigger issues at South than I think anyone realises. 
he just seems to and make. Richie Kenner should thank him because he was on track for back to back pot plants. He just seems to make really simple errors at the wrong time mm. or really crucial errors at the wrong time. Yeah. Like it might be, you know, that one time you need to scoop that ball up and it's just it just doesn't happen and yeah. then everything breaks down. Mm. Or it's just a really simple one where he kicks it into someone's head or kicks it out on the full or just drops it cold from a good pass and yeah. I wonder what the mentor process is like at South for a young half. Yes, and it's not great at the moment. Well, it's one thing, you know, being under Anna Reynolds for a few years. Like, well, Jock Madden, for example. At Brisbane, he's going to spend four years under Adam Reynolds. I'm sure he'll learn something. I wonder who's taking Elias aside and saying, mate, where are we going next? What, what's the plan? What Cody, what's Cody Walker going to teach you about game control and game well, management as a half? In a, in a fair, yeah. It's basically Singling running out, but is there someone else? Hope yeah, is there? You know, um, is there someone else in that? I don't know. I don't know. Is, um, is, there, is there a someone in that isn't, system? Uh, Johnny, John Morris. No, there? John Morris at Tigers now. Oh, he was there. He was there. Uh, yes, but um, so that, that that is a yeah, question. Yeah, no, there's probably do gonna, some research and go. Well, he's going to get eaten up and spat out, there? and that'll be. But, yeah, like Roosters have, you know, for better or worse, have Cooper Cronk. But you know, even there's some pieces. There's issues there. You don't know well. Last year he flicked. He was flicked to reserve grade. They're probably not going to do it again. But what's next? Rooster now. Kiri's out this week. Watch Sam Walker tear the house down. Yeah, I dare say you watch, will. Maybe I'm going off a bit early. Watch, watch him tear the house down this week. But anyway, if he's going to pay direct with Teddy, and then they don't have that issue of the ball getting mm. stuck in the back line. Yeah, because it, it quite has, by default has to be his team. Mm. Um, you got a slap? I do. Um, Brad Arthur, for one. Okay. Playing Brent, why have you got a backup hooker and you're playing for three minutes? Yeah, so he's good for, and he's doing? good for it too. And they needed an Another extra forward. And in you got, that you game. got where, uh, Greg sitting there, or someone that they could inject into the back line yeah. somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, someone like a, a Dylan Walker at the Warriors who can play a bit of back row, get a bit of offloads, and provide some passing to the centers, that kind of stuff. You got a, a backup hooker who comes on for three minutes, makes what fucking one tackle, two yeah. tackles. So what's the point of having him there? You may as well go in with a bench of three. So it seems as realistically as and, it's a, and he's and he's like I said, it's not the first time he's done it. He's, he's pretty good yeah. at. It. And the Warriors coach did it last week with Tom Allo, left him on the bench for the yeah. entire game, and they needed an extra forward as well in that Sharks battle. But um, that, that's one that really bugs me. What, Desi's good for that. Having a bench, like I get it if you, they only get fifteen minutes, that kind of stuff, Desi maybe ten. Did it. But what are you bringing a bloke on for three minutes for? It's <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a. Um, yeah. and the, my main one's Nakora. He's starting to get to the. He's starting to get a bit of red line into him, mm. and he's it's two sin bins in two weeks. I know last week was a was to try to stop a try and holding blokes down, which he does do a bit because he's generally the last bloke there in the cover yeah. and holding someone down. But he's starting to get a little bit loose with some headshots, and he's starting to get a bit of a rap about him as well. So the, these two and three week suspensions could end up being five and six by the end of the season. So. I'm going to slap. So coming down a little I'll get bit. Out, I'll get these out of my system this year. Jerome Luai, uh, high shot, a trip, it, it, and then it'll do much for the next hour. I did just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I might just leave it there for now. Yep. Uh, well, but I'll finish on a good end as we try to do. And I'm going to salute Anthony Seabold and Manly. I said I think they're the best team I saw. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying watching their football, and he. Went out and put his, he went out and said, "No, I will get get the best out of Luke Brooks." Easy to do when you've got you know I said two superstars around him, but <coughs> he backed him and he's reaping the rewards and he's doing something right. Two games in, doing something right. They look they look fantastic, manly. So I'll give them a salute. I give Hammer an honorary one just mm -hmm. um, to come back after last week's shocker and put in such a good performance. Uh, got himself a hat trick. Yeah. But my main one was Tedesco. Uh, yeah. After the rubbish that he copped last year and the way he's changed his, his play style completely, he looks a much fitter proposition at uh, this time of the year. And the way that he's, um, he's, while he's still digging in the line and having a crack for himself, he's looking a lot more towards other options and pr trying to provide options in this Roosters team that's really failing to provide good options for outside backs. He's on the way to making it undeniable that he should be picked for the New South Wales Fullback spot. Who'd have thought that James Desco is good at football? And what about, what was it, eight weeks before the season started? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what he came out and fucking said. So yeah. <laughs> good on him. Uh, a couple of honorary men uh, mentions um, just quickly. As a Tigers fan, I was impressed with Lockie Galvin, 18-year-old 
being handed the full keys to the team, did as well as he could in the situation. And Katoa, we've, someone we've que questioned and um, I thought was very good. So, yeah, 100%. Some wraps to finish up on. Beautiful. We will be back on Wednesday night. I assume we'll obviously Zoom, but tomorrow, Wednesday night, I'll see how the week pans out to preview an interesting round three and uh, where a few teams go with that. Are we gonna do, we'll do a Supercoach chat as well at some yeah. point. Uh, we might all do it all at the put same time, out. but we'll and put yep. some bets out as we've been doing. Check all that out. Golden Slipper Week, so check out Show Us Your Tips. We'll have that show up on the Show Us Your Tips channel. Good week Pretty last week, I heard. It was a very good week. It was mm. most enjoyable. And uh, we will hopefully do the same this week. Uh, I've got to actually think about what I'm, where I'm going to do that, but it's a different story. It'll be up on the Show Us Your Tips <laughs> channel for the Golden Slipper Carnival. Um, check it all out. And stay tuned. Check out Rugby League merch, buy some hats and shirts, and we'll see everyone soon. Bye, Bye -bye. guys.